Doofus, give me a second. I'm riding to you now on top of Feather Rock. We just battled dinosaurs! Oh, we didn't catch them, but we battled them. One was the meanest pinata you'd ever seen, and the other had a mouth full of bread knives. I don't know how or why they were up here, but life finds a way, I guess. Not gonna lie, Dad, it was exhausting. Not for the faint of heart on this one. Aiko was amazing. Sealy, well, <laughs> she'll be back in a second. Oh, Lord. And Toofus evolved! <sighs> I gotta go help the team regroup. I really hope there's a rainbow wing up here. Excellent. Solid. So as solid as your woodwork, Jonah. Oh, thank you, my friend. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> not solid as a rock, but solid. No, not that solid. No, I wouldn't. That's I couldn't possibly claim to be that solid. That's not, yeah. not as solid as Feather Rock. Ooh. Bum, bum, bum. There it is. We've Damn, started. That's nice. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Hello, friends. We are back. Uh, before we get started with all of everything, r picking the action right back up where we left off. Stu's here, and we're very excited. Ha ah! Hello. It's all very good. But before we pick that up, uh, just a quick bit of housekeeping, because that was a big old fight. A uh, couple of level ups to address really quick. George Foreman <laughs> uh, is now leveled up to six. And uh, from previous shenanigans, we just hadn't mentioned it on mic yet. Oscar is up to six as well. Uh, Sarah, want to tell us about those level ups? Sure thing. Sure thing. So they're both at level six now. Oscar is at 64 health. Beefy boy. So, what a tank. What a tank. And Georgie is now at 39 points. But with the damage and stuff like that, for the rest of this episode, it's like 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. George fought hard. And shouldn't have fought. But <laughs> when, a, when a bee fights a, a, a dinosaur, you have a pretty good idea of how that's going to go. He still did better than I expected. I mean, honestly, Agreed. yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's us. Excellent. And with that, let's hop into the action. Pearl, Ika, after seeing Tufus's glorious evolution and watching Aerodactyl and Archaeops fly off across the horizon in the direction of the Kanoko range, the two of you and Luca and your Pokemon find yourself standing on top of Feather Rock. What do you do? I'll, I'll be honest. I never thought that we'd actually make it. Guys, that was the most amazing battle. It was. Uh, thank you. Uh, both of you, thank you so much. I I, I I, really struggle with expressing my feelings correctly, I suppose, but I don't know if it's the lack of oxygen up here or what, but I'm just going to say what I'm feeling. <sighs> thank you. No one has ever helped me like that before and put themselves in danger. And just thank you. As you're talking about expressing your feelings and having trouble with that, you see that Luca's just like crying and hugging Toofus, but he's like, yeah, you're welcome. Of course, Aika. Let me teach you something really quick. It's going to help you express. It's going to be amazing. Oh, okay. You'll feel relaxed. Yeah. You'll feel amazed. Cool. Okay. Bend your knees. Bending. Now, prep your hand for a high five. Oh, uh, right. Okay. So. And on the count of three, we jump. So, uh, so I'm bending. Not, not, not off. Not off. Just up. <laughs> right, right. So yes. But if off happened, <laughs> it would still be amazing. We'd make but it work. We'd have to catch you. Yeah, right. we'd make it work. All right. Do I have to roll? One, two, <laughs> three, and we jump, and we get a freeze frame high five. Ding! <laughs> freeze frame high five. Ah, ah. I like to imagine that Pearl in that one jumps and yells. Emotions. <laughs> Feelings. Being true to yourself. <laughs> it's just like Fanta with the electrolytes. It's emotions. <laughs> and we come back down. Pearl, thank you. See? That, Didn't that help? That, it did. And what's more, it wasn't even that hard. Right? All right. Okay. You just got to believe in yourself. Thanks, Luca. So I guess we're here. Yeah. Let's... Is there like a rainbow... Are we looking for a pot of gold? Yeah. Small little, you know, green guys with hat. As you all look around at the top of Feather Rock, 
you see that uh, it looks to be a bit of a mess right now after uh, the, the ancient power and all of that uh, from the fight, uh, things getting moved and uh, bonked around and stuff like that. So it, it's kind of a mess right here, but you can certainly look around if you want to search for what might be up here on top of Feather Rock. I really do. I really want to search. I want to find it. Yeah. All right. Well, give me a give me a investigation or a perception. Okay, I can choose. Yeah, well, d- describe the manner in which you're doing it and then do the correlating one. Ica looks around the rocks, definitely not in an investigative manner because that would be that would be crazy. No, it's far more perceptive what uh, what Ica's doing and you can you can really tell there's a real distinction between the two. So she's going to sort of um she's going to she's going to hold up her hand to just above her eyes and just just really peer, just really perceptively peer around and this is absolutely nothing to do with the plus 6 that I have to this skill. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, while, while you while you peer, Pearl, what are you doing? I like to imagine that Pearl sees Ika trying really hard mm-hmm. and slowly from her detective kit slides up a magnifying glass <laughs> like just right in front of her face. <laughs> so, if I could just give Ika advantage, that's cool with me. Yeah, so go ahead and roll with advantage on your perception, Ika. Okay. As we'll say that the three of you are all looking around the top of the rock now. Ooh, that's a, that's a nine plus six. That's a 15, but we got, we, we got more. We got more in the tank. Oh, it's a nat 20. Whoa! Nat 20. Oh, I want to show you. Natural. Magnifying glasses always help. Oh, uh, I, I can't. Okay. It's a nat 20. It's a nat 20. I believe there it. Is. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, there it is. Nice dice. Yeah. It's, yeah. I love that dice. It's dappled. Yeah, no, no, what a way to start. A natural 20. 26. 26. 36. D- d- oh. Wow. Sure. D- 56. Bingo. <laughs> d- uh. <laughs> Bing- <laughs> Bingo. Yahtzee. What do I see? What do I elf I see? What do I elf I see? As you look around, the three of you are uh, peering very hard. And as you look around, you see that many of the rocks and rubble that form some semblance of a nest for these ancient flying beasts you just fought off have, have shifted around uh, during the course of battle, namely through the, the ancient power attacks and, you know, uh, Pokemon getting bumped around and tossed into things. But as you are looking around, you, you go to what, what looks like the most nest-like area out of all of it, and you find a couple of interesting items with your Nat 20. Pearl... You recognize these because they look very similar to something that you saw in storage in Professor Nichols' home. One looks to be part of a wing, fossilized and encased in stone, and the other is a piece of amber that looks to have some sort of ancient biological material encased inside. But you find these two items in the nest. They are fossils. Pearl just holds them up, boinks them together. Okay, cool. What? And she shows, you know, yeah. Wait, what? What? What have you got? What have you got there? I really don't know. Well, they—they're fossils, right? Like Professor Nichols had those in it. Well, you know, he had the the one that was missing, but there were the others that were there in like the case and stuff. And these look kind of oh. like those. Cool. So is this the rainbow ring? Well, no, they're just—they're just fossils. It, you know, that one looks like. Well, from the from the pictures, it's like the one with the amber looks like. Like, that's, that's the same kind that he had that uh, would have been, like, an aerodactyl, and then the, the other one is a, is a wing like, like the other one, the archaeo, so that's weird. So, like, if you, if you could, like, extract the DNA or something, Pearl, maybe you could, you could open, like, a park for, for these, these old creatures, and people could come and see them, and absolutely nothing would go wrong. I can see it already. No, nothing that bad would amazing. possibly happen. Nothing bad. No, it'd just be wonderful. That sounds amazing. And people could take pictures with the little baby one. Yeah, yeah, they could cuddle them. And we'd feed them. And maybe there'd be a pizza shop. There have to be. There's no bad outcome. Oh, maybe maybe there could be like uh, like a Jimmy Wubba Fett's uh, um, Miracoteville. I don't know. <laughs> something that's not Margaritaville. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> In the park. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're like constantly dressed in dino pattern. All right, can we can we combine Sky Buffet with this? Oh. Wait. Wait, that's perfect. Luca, are you looking for an investment opportunity? Uh, you know, I I could be because this is an excellent idea, and I'm here for it. Well, we'll I mean, I guess well, okay. First things first, we'd have to actually figure out how to do that. But you know, that's I don't I don't even know where to start with that. Guys, 
prime real estate right up here. We started on the rock. Yes. Now, science, science, be gone. We'll figure that out later. What we have is an idea, and ideas are important, and oh my goodness, I'm forgetting why I'm here. The wing. The wing. Right. Sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You start frantically looking around for a moment uh, after after the talk of this this park of fossil Pokemon. Who knows what you could call something like that? Uh, but you start looking around again, and Ika, something catches your eye. Among the rubble, you see a familiar shape, one that you have looked at many times in old photographs and cast in bronze in front of the Museum of Flight. You see a piece of one of the wings of Gloria's biplane. <sighs> Not the whole plane. But a piece of it. Oh my goodness! And you, you run over. Yeah, you start digging around further in some of the rocks and debris. Yeah, it's got to be here. It, it, it has to be. It's, it's just like all the pictures and the statues and everything. And she's sort of just digging and scrabbling and scrabbling and. And you find, uh, uh, as you continue to look, you find a, a propeller, a piece of a steering mechanism, other bits of detritus that have some way found their way here on top of Feather Rock. And in the light of the afternoon sun, you see a glint coming from something else in the pile. And you, you push away more of the stones and gravel, and you see that the glint came from a buckle attached to something soft and leathery. And you brush off some of the dirt and dust. You do the, whoosh, the fossil dust blow off. And you find yourself holding an old aviator helmet that looks to have a few prehistoric claw marks on it here and there. Wow. What? You turn it over to look at it, and something falls out from the inside. Even brighter than the glint from the buckle, the light of the sun reflects off of this multicolored feather with a brilliant shine. In your hand, attached to a fine, somewhat rusted chain, is the rainbow wing. Uh, Aika! It's here! It's real! Pearl, I, I found it. I... I'm not sure I should be holding this. It feels almost too heavy for me. <sighs> Maybe it's heavy for you, but it might be the right weight for Sky. And Sky sort of hops over on the ground next to you uh, and just looks up at you with a brrr as you're holding the rainbow wing. What do you think, Sky? Do you want to give her to go? Brrr, brrr, brrr. I'm not one to hold you back. This is your dream. We're here for you. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Question. Yes. Is this something is this is this something that I can give to Sky like now, or is it something that I'm gonna need to take back to like fixy fixy metal metal tinky tinky makey makey? You choose how you would like to incorporate Bang, it. Bang <laughs> hammer fix screw titan create. How slam. It's like the Batman intro when he's beating up bad guys and he goes pow. Fix. Make. Tools. <laughs> create. Wrench. Well, maybe, okay, maybe, maybe Sky is, um, not to, not to retcon, but like just that we would have seen this previously anyway, is that Sky is already wearing some form of contraption, some kind of harness. It's very sort of how to train your dragon with, with toothless, you know, missing part of their wings. So there's something to fix into it, but... Up until this point, it's not really worked properly. It's allowed Sky to get a couple of flaps in the air and then and then go down. But there is some some way that if I attach the rainbow wing correctly, uh, Tink the Clink can come and help me fix it up. I've got a couple of I've got a I've got pockets for days. There's definitely a spanner in here somewhere. You got like a oh, D12 yeah. worth of pockets, man. Wait, I just I just opened. There's there's four spanners in here. <laughs> there's four of them. So absolutely, we're gonna we're gonna try and fix it right here, right now. Yeah. Pearl makes a workbench for Ika out of the wings of the plane. Oh, yes. Okay, great. And she's like, uh, it gets a little surgical. She goes like, wrench, hammer, gloves, sanitized, and clean. How, how are we doing? Are we still there? We're not losing them. A little more to the left. Okay. Just an inch, <sighs> a hair. Ika just leans in. A smidge. Dabs sweat from her brow. Yes. You're doing amazing. You're doing wonderfully. A smackerel here. Brr, brr. Oh, Tink, don't just stand there. Help her. Help her. Clank, clank, clank. And you insert the rainbow wing into this contraption. As it is put into place, you see a bit of a rainbow glow outlining Sky the Pit of. 
Pearl, your visor actually goes off a little bit, but it's because it's like the opposite of the shadow energy. There's oh. very powerful, positive energy exuding from Sky in this moment. Aika, this is gonna be good. <gasps> And I think Ike is, Ike is just sort of like, please work, please work, please work, please work, please work, please, 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 please be okay, please be okay. Sky hops around for a second, uh, flapping her wings to sort of uh, get a feel for it, to test this out. She flaps around a little bit. She jumps up in the air, flaps her wings, and gets a little bit of heightened. She goes and she flaps a little higher, gets a little more, and then she sees the edge of Feather Rock, and she has a look of determination in her face. She looks over toward the edge of the rock as she just starts running and, and flapping her wings and going over toward the edge, running and flapping. Sky, Sky, don't push it. Don't push it. Just a little flight. I said just a little one. And she jumps off the edge. Ah! Sky! For a moment, you see nothing. <gasps> we run up to the edge, like looking down. Yeah, just peeking. As you run over to the edge, you look down and you see... <gasps> and a flapping of wings oh. as gloriously, beautifully, Sky is flying. <gasps> and I think, I think instinctively, Ika just turns and like jumps into a into an upwards high five position. The same one that Pearl just taught her. Sort of fe- just fe- it's, it's an instinctive thing. She just feels it and unleashes this high f- flying five to celebrate. Yes. So powerful. You do. <sighs> Sky can fly, Ika. Yay! Oh my goodness. I, I never n- thought I'd see it. You're doing it, Sky! You look amazing! You're, you're better than a drone! As like we do a circle. Uh, what? Sky, uh, just try try doing a, a barrel roll or something. She does a barrel roll. Whoa! No barrel roll! Look at that, she just did <gasps> a figure eight! Wow! It's like... She's been. I think. I think there's this almost flashback, not not of an actual vision, but just a memory of Sky, and she sort of sees, you know, visions and captures where like she's been going to bed, and she's been like, Sky, come on, we're, we're going to bed, and Sky's like, yeah, yeah, in a second, and you know, Ika sort of like stays and peeks around the door a little bit and sees Sky up in the aviary, on with those loops and those hoops and stuff, and she's just she's practicing, even with her wing not exactly working properly, she's still like climbing back on that hoop day after day. Hit off, boom, hit off, boom. And like, even then, so it's almost like she knew what she was going to do before she even got the rainbow wing. And this, this, now this freedom, it's almost like when you've been, you've been training at high altitude and you've therefore had low oxygen and then suddenly you're, you're on the, the, the sea level and you're like, this is so easy now. So she just, the aptitude for, for one flying the first time is unrivaled. Yes. Yeah, she's been she's been training so hard and yeah, and that high altitude metaphor is very very apt for this. Is she has been going through all of the motions but just has not had the proper, you know, uh, equipment. She hasn't had, you know, what she needed to to really succeed at that. But now that she's got the wing, she can fly and it's like she's been doing it her whole life. And it's really beautiful to watch. Does she have a slight rainbow trail? It, like a like just a a hinkling, a hint inkling. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Amazing. Oh. I mean, this, this is the wing of a ho-o. 100% got a rainbow trail. Right, right? Yeah. Okay, amazing, amazing. She's got a lucky charm. <sighs> uh, speaking of a lucky charm, let me give you the perks of your Ooh. magic item, essentially, that you've gotten. Oh. Well, Sky, Sky is now level 100. Are you sure, Jonah? Ha <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, if that's... She yeah. can breathe fire? Wow. What? She can travel in time? <laughs> <laughs> the rainbow wing for a Pokemon that has it equipped doubles that Pokemon's fly speed, increases that Pokemon's strength and dex by two, ignoring the usual sort of cap of 20, and gives advantage on flight related checks. Whoa. Okie dokie. <laughs> okay. Do- okay. It came from a legendary Pokemon. It's got to be good. <laughs> All right, Sky. I've just I've just renamed I've renamed her Sky Prime version. <laughs> this is this is Alpha Alpha Prime Alpha Prime Sky. Yep, she's ready. Alpha Prime Sky. Is this what is that what she sounds like now? Yes, she <laughs> she tweets like this now. Ika, I've been wait I've been waiting for you to f- reveal my true form, Ika. This is me now, Sky, your partner. Tweet tweet tweetly tweet. <laughs> Okay, excellent, excellent, great. And with that, 
you've got the fossils, which you guys can decide what you want to do with. Uh, you've got the helmet, and you've got the rainbow wing. I guess we should um we should head down. I mean. Oh yeah, it's time for your grand reveal, for your like, what's the cotillion? The cot- <laughs> it's time. <laughs> We're going to make it look awesome. You'll get a runway. Let's do this, Aika. Okay. Do you want fans? Do you want a parade? Well. Here she comes. It's Aika. Well, I mean, you know, I, I suppose a, a few of those things sound kind of fun. <laughs> um, Done. Can I be on a shirt? <laughs> really? Bring out the symbols. And then Pearl has a moment where she drops. <gasps> Seely! And she immediately pulls out a stretcher. And starts to do a healing kit. Oh, no. Celie is very much like, you know. Oh, no. Very dramatic. She's like on a fainting couch. Like, oh, no. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. I'm so sorry. And maybe we actually put her back on the workbench. And she goes, I'm clean. Again. And heals the, <laughs> heals Celie. Yeah, you can essentially do a short rest if you want. Oh, okay, perfect. I'd like to go over to where I found the rainbow wing briefly. Maybe, maybe if we if we're short resting, just to take a second. Yeah, no, yeah. You, you guys. Yeah, there's no rest. Essentially, the air show is tomorrow. Great. So you've got now the rest of the day to do whatever to prepare for the air show. So maybe just just before we head down from this the plateau or or whatever we're on 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 Feather Rock, it's sort of like I, I'll I'll catch you up. Just give me a minute. And I just want to go over to where I found the stuff, the helmet and the buckle and everything. Did you say I had the helmet? Yeah, yeah, you picked up the helmet. And again, it is very familiar. Yeah. You can tell by looking at it. It's it's the one from the statue. I, t- I, I take a look at the helmet for a second. I don't know if it's reflective, but or maybe in the goggles or something, I can just sort of see myself in in her jacket. And there's a moment of recognition. And then I sort of, I find like a stick or something and I just, I just like plant it into the ground like, <clears throat> and I just put the helmet on top and I'd say, great grandmother, I know we never found you and I know no one knows what happened to you, but I just want everyone to know, I just want you to know that everyone thinks you're a hero and there's a statue of you in town and even though I didn't know you, I love you. And then I think she just walks away. Excellent. You walk away after making this memorial to Gloria. Yes, essentially just to give, like, because she never had a, a, a send off or anything, just to give her something. Nice. Yeah, I love that. I absolutely I love do that. imagine Pearl and Sealy lightly humming out Danny Boy <laughs> underneath it. <laughs> yes, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I think it's time to go down. Mm-hmm. Should we see if that Pidgeotto's still there? Yeah, I'd like to take that ride again. Yeah. 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 Nice. That'd be good. How patient is this Pidgeotto? <laughs> <laughs> well, it really, it hasn't been terribly, terribly long. I mean, you, t- you take a short rest, but still, it's not even late in the afternoon at this point. You solved my forest puzzle so quickly and just flew over it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> There's still a good chunk of the day left, but you all can certainly, uh, you know, you got up there. You can certainly make your way down as Seely concludes her very Catherine O'Hare rendition of Danny Boy. And you all make your way down. And the Pidgeotto's still down there. And it, it sees you come down. And it has, a, a, you know, about as a shocked of a look on its face as a bird can have. <laughs> that you came down. We we came back. We did. Why? Did you not? It, 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 it like looks up to see if there's anything like flying above. Oh, the, the big. Don't worry about it. D- yeah, it's fine. Don't worry. We handled it. And it's like, all right, <laughs> cool, cool beans <laughs> in bird speak. Would you mind taking us down? Here's the thing. All right. Uh, there's a big air show tomorrow. If you help us get down, perhaps I could sort of, you know, slip you in the hat, goblet of fire style and, you know, put you in the competition. Maybe you can make a name for yourself or something. I, I don't know. You could be like a free agent, a trainer's Pidgeotto in the air show. No one's ever seen that before. You could be a star. 
make a make a persuasion check. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Good idea. I don't I don't know actually is it is that a thick Jonah is there is that a is that like a an, an absolute you know admonishment of the usual rules and conduct or is it or is it free agent could like or maybe you know because you could pretend to have a trainer or something I don't know um, what am I doing I'm not deceiving I am persuading yeah, yeah I think I think okay. I'm persuading because it's different than like an animal handling because like yeah, yeah. you all have already done the sort of amount of animal handling to get this Pidgeotto on your side you can count this Pidgeotto as an ally okay. Okay, I'm a flat, flat nothing for charisma. So, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> she says this in a very monotone voice. You could enter the air show <laughs> with a six. <laughs> <laughs> it would be really fun. I think that the Pidgeotto does not have a concept of what an air show is. That's... That's, that's that's so right, Jenna. I'm so silly. Ike <laughs> is just there talking to a wild Pokemon about Like, it's amazing. There's like a corn dog stand and stuff. And it's just like... <laughs> still pecking at some seeds that I left from earlier. I was about to say, yeah, the, the Pidgeotto does, uh, while not knowing what an air show is and having no concept of that whatsoever, uh, the Pidgeotto does seem like it, it enjoys hanging out with y'all and is pecking at that bird seed. Oh, wait a second. Pidgeotto, could you have Aika ride in on your back for the air show for her cotillion? Oh, we've got the entrance. Now we just need the streamers, the confetti, the music, the blow horns, the fog machine, the bubbles. Guys, we have so much to do. Aika's making a list. Aika's just like pulled a notepad from one of the pockets and it's just like we also need the canny pearl can, sorry can you just go back three i just i, I got stuck on blow horns sure. was it blow horn or blow hole no problem do we do we need a whale both a, a whalemer take both okay yep i bet we could find somebody with a whalemer you yeah. <laughs> know we'll be fine impulse buying right right okay listen let's go we got a lot to do we got a lot to prepare apparently oh yeah and you all leave Feather Rock the way you came. Uh, I think that this time, since there's not really as much of a, a time crunch, and since you've already convinced the Pidgeotto, it's on your side. You don't have to do the simultaneous uh, two of you flying at once, one on the back, one being carried by the claws. Uh, but you can, one at a time, the Pidgeotto uh, takes Ika oh. and Pearl both over the forest. And Pearl, you can actually Pearl. get to fly on its back this time. Yeah. Well, Unless you want it to carry you in the talons. Pearl definitely wants the talons. <laughs> <laughs> if that's okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's whatever you want. She's in it for the thrill. <laughs> Pearl, whatever you're comfortable with, honestly. Honestly. Oh, yeah. Living on the edge. So I'm, I'm helping you by sitting on the bird, right? You know, that's a favor, <laughs> correct? Oh, definitely. Just so we're clear. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. You heard it, Luca. I did hear it. As he rips the SS Speedmeister. He rides up on his hog. Hops on that hog and, and just rips it, rides through that forest. He's, he's really cool. Oh, he's the best. You have no idea. And she gives like, well, I guess during our sleepover, she got the whole backstory of Luca. But like, Aika, you have no idea how much he puts up with me. But not even like puts up with me, but like supports me. All the time. And I think I think Ike is just sort of looking, maybe maybe blushing a little, maybe just like a little dreamily, just looking at the, the trail of the hog as it <laughs> rips into the forest, just like, mm-hmm, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. He mm-hmm, could use more mm-hmm, pockets, uh-huh. though. And she hops on. Yeah, uh, yeah, right, right, pockets, chef. Yeah. Let's go, shall we leave? Okay. Luca rides off very cool in the distance into the forest area with Tufus the Croconaw in the sidecar, like, ah. All she's seen of Luca is this, you know, riding motorbikes, <laughs> you know, evolving totodiles and stuff. Like, he's the coolest. Hello friends, Jonah here to say thank you for listening to Postcards from Pearl. 
Little heads up, you might have noticed, I mean, we hope you haven't, but if you have, oh well. We had some technical issues with this recording that we weren't aware of until after the fact. Uh, there was something weird going on with Sarah's mic. We think it was probably like a faulty cable issue that caused some buzzing at certain points. Uh, I've done what I can to edit it out in post, but it is what it is. That to say, if you think something sounds off, that's because it is. Uh, we might have some of the same issue in the next episode because we recorded them at the same time, but we should have it all sorted after that. I would like to thank Stu Clark for joining us as our guest for this mini arc. We absolutely love Stu. You should too, and you should check out his other work. You can find him on Twitter at Stu Clark and the Critical Ditto podcast at Critical Ditto. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our fabulous partner, Dice Envy. You know, Sarah and I were uh, visiting with family recently, and when I was packing my bags, I made sure to put some of my Dice Envy dice in there just in case a game of D&D or Tiny Dungeon or whatever broke out. I wanted to play with some real dice, not just some phone app. And, and yeah, sure, we didn't end up playing, but I was ready. You can get 10% off of your purchase at Dice Envy by going to DiceEnvy.com slash QuestCo or by using promo code QuestCo at checkout. That's Q-U-E-S-T-C-O for 10% off of your entire order. If you're a fan of what we do here on Quest Company Jr. and you want to give us a boost, please go to our page on the Apple Podcasts app or wherever you listen to your podcast and leave us a rating and review. It is a huge help to us and we read every review that comes in. Speaking of which, we had a new review come in this week. Thank you to Ragtime Lime for sending in your lovely feedback. It truly does mean the world to us. And if you really love what we do here at Quest Company Jr. and you want to take the next step in supporting us, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. For as little as $2 a month, you can help us with necessary expenses, help us continue to improve the quality of the show, and get access to exclusive content and patron rewards. If you'd like to give us that support, you could do so at patreon.com slash questcompanypodcast. You can find the link to the Patreon on our website, questcompanyjr.com. If you'd like to contact us, you could do so directly through our website or by finding us on Instagram and Twitter at QuestCo Junior. You can also hang out with us in our QuestCo Discord. The link to that is on our website and Twitter. We know that word of mouth is the best way to get people listening to a new podcast, so please, if you're enjoying the show, let other people know. If we see you tweeting about us or posting fan art using hashtag Questco Junior or hashtag Postcards from Pearl, you might get a character named after you on the show. And if you have fan art of the podcast that you want to share, just make sure when you post it to tag us so that we can see it. Speaking of fan art, we got a great piece sent in this week. Thank you to Fisher Peach at Peach Doodles on Twitter for finishing up Mermaid Strong with a picture of Pearl as a mermaid swimming in the ocean with Seely. We love it. If you haven't seen that, go check it out on our Instagram and Twitter or on the fan art page of the website where we have a gallery of all the art that people have sent us. Quest Company Jr. is a proud member of Podicon Go, a group of independent podcasts supporting high quality content that's fun for the whole family. Podicon Go is your reliable corner of the internet for the kind of podcast that everyone can enjoy, with shows ranging from animal facts to stories to audio dramas to RPG actual plays and more. Check them out at podicongo.com. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the incredible artists whose music is featured in this episode. Thank you to Foolboy Media for the song Video Game Land. Thank you to Glitch X City for Pokemon Sword and Shield Turf Field Lo-Fi Remix. Thank you to Braxton Burks, Eric Bucholz, and Materia Collective for A Tale of Three Beasts Part 1, Rise to Victory, and Sandstorm Route 111. Thank you to Jay Blank for their version of Danny Boy. Thank you to Uncan for the song Past. Thank you to Dark Fantasy Studio for the song Forensic. And thanks to Visager for Plateau at Night. And thank you to TabletopAudio.com for providing the ambient sounds that's all for me so let's get back and see what our crew's going to do to get ready for the upcoming air show thank you for joining us here on quest company junior warning the following promo contains pokemon based improv Benary, finish it with a double kick bun, bun, bun! oh no you've defeated me lord of psychic types <laughs> king photon King Photon, I knew it was you. You appeared in a shimmer of light in my bedroom to challenge me to a Pokemon gym battle. Say it's all right, but hey, I've beaten you now. And your silly Abra, give me a gym badge. A gym badge? From Point King Photon? Yes. I can grant you anything. A wish? What's your wish? I'll tell you. A Pokemon roleplay podcast. Well, that's not my wish. It I... is now. Okay. Plug it in. Welcome to Critical Ditto, a tabletop roleplaying podcast set in the world of Pokemon, focused on collaborative storytelling and improv. Is it a game? Yes, a role-playing game with dice and voices. I kind of would prefer a gym badge, if I'm honest. Well, I don't have any. Well, get the hell out of my room! Photon away! 
<laughs> You're still here! Abra, help me! Help me, please! Abra! You're still here! Abra's gone! <laughs> oh, can I listen to the podcast? Search for Critical Ditto wherever you get your podcasts if you want a bit more of whatever that was. So for the rest of this afternoon, you all can go sign up whoever you want to be in the air show. You can pick which of your Pokemon you want to do that. I, I think that you still would actually need to sign up Sky now that Sky could actually compete. Yes, yes. Of course, obviously Sky would not even be on the radar. This is interesting. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you, you can go to sign up and Pearl, you can decide if you want to enter and what competitions you want to enter. If one of you wants to enter like a competition with the Pidgeotto you certainly can and Luca will see if he's got anybody that he wants to put in there uh, but you could do that and then spend the rest of the day just doing whatever you want to prepare for tomorrow cool just reminding myself there's speed racing yes there's the medium to low altitude and then there's the high altitude so for each ranking there's a double a and triple a at each of those ranks there's racing and there is aerobatics so, like, the single A is the small Pokemon, and they do the their stuff close to ground level in the gardens. And then double A is open air, but then also, like, there's a little bit of incorporation into the gardens and stuff. Uh, but then triple A is completely open air, trainers riding on the Pokemon doing stuff. Aika. Uh-huh. Which one do you want to go in? A, double A, triple A, Disney World, well, I, package? I feel like Sky is still a little too small for me to ride on. Oh, sure. You know, even with amazing rainbow contraptions of pure amazing energy and good, light, nice things. So I think we're going to enter into the speed rank A competition. What do you think you'll do? I don't know. I think Georgie wants a little taste of the thrill. Ooh. Oh. Do you know? Ooh. And she's like doing little flips in the air and stuff and doing her usual zigzag flight pattern. I definitely Looks like, yeah. need your expertise, though. My expertise? What do you think Georgie would do well in? Oh, jeez, uh, geez, no one's ever asked me my opinion for something like this. But I have watched a lot of air shows, even from the sidelines, so... Yeah, this is my first. You're definitely an expert. I think, I think, I think Georgie has got raw talent. I really believe that. Honestly. Like raw honey, raw talent. Like, so raw. Like, untouched, untapped. Some would say unpolished, but, you know, not me. Not me. Um, I just think... I think the curvitude of Georgie's, you know, form is... Right? Unpackageable. You can't put that in a bottle. No, no. But it, it, it's all about angles, Pearl. And I think George has six of them. So, six times two with a gradient of four equals success. That's what I found. That's the math. That's the... I, you can't argue with the math. Well, I got the I got the numbers right here. Luca pulls up a white boy. He's like, it all makes sense. <laughs> thank, th- thanks, Luca. Um, listen, if we practice a little at the Avery tonight, I think Georgie will have a few tricks up their sleeve to, you know, uh, uh, razzle dazzle the opponents. <laughs> <gasps> Man, when I was a girl, there was a show called the Razzle Dazzle Show, and I would watch it every single day as a kid. Ah! So if we enter, we're gonna go in as Razzle Dazzle. Team Razzle Dazzle. Mm-hmm. Yes, I love it. I love it. Um, so I guess we go and find the the, the sign up area. Great. So you are entering Sky in single A racing. You are entering George Foreman into single A aerobatics. Do either of you want to enter a competition with the Pidgeotto? You certainly can if you want to. Basically, the Pidgeotto is yours. Like you, outside of actually capturing it in a Pokeball, like is this is, is this another situation kind of like with with Scamp, where a Pokemon is just following me now, and I'm like ah, <laughs> just pecking at the bird seed in that one pocket. I'm I, I'm picking up quite a menagerie now. Um, <laughs> listen, I understand that my my strange pitch to you maybe didn't make sense earlier, but you carried us both real well, and I think you deserve a chance. So let's enter you, which I'm going to name. Right now, okay? Okay. Pidgeotto. Let me let me look at your plumage. 
let me stare into your soul. It's very fluffy plumage. As I name you, Puff. Puff, Puff the, the Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto. That is what you have been called by me, Ika, and I am assertive, and I have said it. So there. Was that okay, Pearl? Do we like... Do we like Puff? Is Puff okay? Ah! Uh, Ika, who are you? That was amazing. Puff is great. All right, Puff, Puff. Puff the Pidgeotto. We're, we're going to enter you, and you're going to do well. Into double A. Fan. Fantastic. I'm gonna I'm gonna add Puff. I'm gonna add Puff. Hold on here. I've got I've got Puff. I was just about to Yeah, I was pulling it up in the app. Oh you've got Puff. Oh it's good. It's good. Everyone else in the party is immediately jealous of these stats. <laughs> <laughs> like scamps like I was the powerful one! <laughs> I was strong! I was so strong! Uh, well Puff, Puff is Puff has got a cocky nature, so Puff's loving it. Puff is all about it. Puff, it, uh, the puff, the puffing is of the chest. Yeah. The big pecs, if you will. The, the big pecs, yes. It's just strutting around and Puff is like, pitch, pitch, order, pitch, order. <laughs> um, strutting the stuff and um, yeah, def- definitely making Scamp a little bit jealous. Strutting, striking a pose. Yeah, and also also taking taking the place of Scamp as like the hanger on. <laughs> the, the, slight, the slightly distant hanger on. So then, Ika, would you like to enter Puff the Pidgeotto into the double A racing or aerobatics? Well, if if Sky's if Sky's doing racing, mm-hmm. let's do let's do aerobatics. Awesome. With with Puff. Sure. As Ika signs up for all these things, for the last one, Pearl says, Does that mean you'd be up against your mom? That's a point. What other names do I see on the list? In double A aerobatics, you do see Ernest. <gasps> My grand. Your grandmother. Ooh. We can, we can laugh, but that's terrifying. That's filled me with a dread unknown. <laughs> She's tricksy. She, she doesn't play fair. Ernest and her fun. dreaded swoobat. Oh, not the swoobat. <laughs> oh. All right, all right. And who's in, who's in Sky Racing A? In the A rank racing, uh, you see there's you and a few other names that you don't know, but you also see the name of your rival. Who is your rival in flight? They have a Spiro. Oh, they have a Spiro. Perfect. I think whether it's whether it's by blood or not, I think this is Zephyr, Lord of Lord of the Skies, Laura. This is like this is who she. It's either it's either an older sibling of mine. Mm-hmm. Or like someone who she's kind of adopted. She's literally taken under her wing as, well, my child couldn't really cut it uh, as, a, as a true speed racer. So I, uh, I'm taking you under the wing and you are going to be my adopted, you know, in, in photo shoots and stuff. She'll be there almost like the mother figure to the rising, the rising flight star that is. Ooh. That is. A cousin? Yeah, your, cu- your cousin. My cousin, Cody. Cody. Oh. Cody and his Spiro. Cousin Cody. Have you ever watched Arrested Development, Stu? Yes. Yeah. It makes me think of the photo shoots that Lucille that and- Lucille does, yes. <laughs> yes. I'm in Army now. Or like the sailor outfits. They're my awards, mother, from Army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly like that. So yeah, Zephyr, there's on that that the the photo shelf from before. The one mine was tucked behind was just all these photos of Laura and, and Cody. And he's exactly, he, she's like dressed him. She has created the image of Cody. He's dressed in these very tight, like almost pilot clothes. And he's got this very um, swept uh, haircut. It's very slick. It's very tight. But he just looks, he looks like the most boring person in the world. <laughs> like he's just staring like. Completely, completely flat. I can imagine if he talks, he's like this. Oh hello! Yes, I'm Kurt. He, he's just uh, the, equi- the the epitome of like all talent, no charisma, no charisma at all. Yes, Cody, the Cloud Prince. Ew, ew. Oh, that's great. The protege of <laughs> Laura, aka Zephyr, Queen of the Skies. <laughs> I hate him. I don't hate him. I, that's not fair. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Is that the plastic dude? That's the plastic dude. You're up against him. Yeah, the doll, Cody. You'll do great. Oh, I hope so. I just he he is good, but yeah, forget about it. I'm here. Sky's Sky's here. We'll we'll do fine. We'll do great. Yeah. What do you want to do for the rest of the day? We should train, but like you know, we should also have a little celebration. I feel it was such a big day. I wonder if we could train and do something fun at the same time. Oh, I bet. Mm. Knowing us, totally. 
There is, oh, there's the museum. Maybe we could go into, we could like sneakily break into the museum. Oh, I love breaking into things. <laughs> right, um, okay, here's the thing. I do know a back way into the museum because I sometimes like go in there after dark and just, you know, I'm not a people person and it can get cr- crowded in the day. So, you know, I don't do anything weird. I just sort of go there. Um, but maybe we could just go there and like train, but very carefully and quietly and also look at some of the exhibits and stuff. Is that fun? I, oh, I yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It is? Okay, great. And Pearl changes into all black. <sighs> oh, yes. She goes, let's get sneaky. Finger guns to Aika. And sort of shyly, uh, Luker, did you, you want to come too? Luca like runs up to join you all after he was over at the signups and at the PC. He was like, oh, uh, sorry, wait, what? what's happening? Are you doing crime? Sorry, I was just signing up. What? What's going on? Not crime, unless you think crime's cool. Um, no, no, uh, just, you know. Luca just knows my stealth outfit. It's stealth. We're stealthing. Uh, we are okay. doing that. All right. Yeah, no, I'm down. Sorry, I was just, uh, I realized I, I have a Pokemon that can fly, at least kind of. We're going to find out. It's going to be great. <laughs> is, it, is this a surprise, Luca? I love surprises. Oh, uh, no. So I, uh, I caught a Heracross. Uh, so we're going to try that. Oh, wow. No, that's perfect. I've seen Heracrosses compete before. Oh. They can do quite well. Yeah, so we'll see. I, you know, I, I just caught them pretty recently. So we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. But I realized, you know, I was like, oh, well, I got, you know, my Ghastly, but it kind of just floats. But then I was like, oh, wait, no, it's wings. They're kind of tucked away in the, like, carapace. But it'll work. We'll find out. It'll be fun. Ica is still sort of like nodding and smiling, but in her head, she's just gone into this daydream bubble of seeing Luca like majestically upon this Heracross, just like zooming through the skies, looking incredible. And she's like, mm hmm, yep, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. <laughs> Speaking of majestically riding on Pokemon, while you were over at the sign up sheet, you did also see that Shane had signed up for AAA racing. A AAA? Man, who is this guy? You know, sometimes I think he's worth my attention. And other times, I wish he was dirt. <laughs> Do you know what? He's not, e- he's not even in the same category as us. We could literally just turn around and not watch that bit. Why don't we get popcorn at that moment when he's, in, when he's racing? And then he'll look for you and you won't even be there. <laughs> well, he's, Perfect. That's what I want to do. I want him to look for me and I'm not even going to be there. And I don't know how we'll know that ha- happens. But maybe we just, like, let Coconut and Scamp watch and, like, you know, retell it. They could like, they could have like a signal thing. Like they, if they could just pass a little electric current across some wires or something, and then we'll know when he's coming and then we'll just go. Also, wouldn't it be so fun to sneak up on him right before he gets on and tie his shoelaces together? That would be perfect. Okay, we have plans. We do. A lot of them involve a lot of sneaking and like borderline naughty stuff, but uh... <laughs> you know, I like there's... to prefer just the term wild. Cheeky. Cheeky. Cheeky, cheeky's good. Look, uh, if there's one thing that I have learned, it's that we're, we're pretty good at being borderline naughty, aka cheeky, boisterous. Yeah. Okay. Right. The cheeksters. And saying that, let's go. Let's go break into a museum. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and off we go. This would actually be really cool in real life, in the sense of like going to the Air and Space Museum in Washington and training your flight people there. Like that's so cool. In my head. Well, hopefully we break in successfully, but in my head, we're going to be like sort of, <laughs> I don't know, jumping off bird skeletons and like, yes. you know, pretending to be, pretending to do dog fights while in planes going, tuk, 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 tuk. I got you, I got you. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Perfect. Ah, we'll, we'll see. Right. So are you waiting until like after the museum closes for the evening to do this? Yeah, we're waiting until Porter, Porter Pete locks up for the night. Porter Pete. Let's just write that down. Porter Pete. He's the he's the Jeff of this place. Uh, he's quite curmudgeonly. He's a little... Porter Pete. <laughs> he's, he's been working there too long. He's lost the love. He's lost the love. He's, he's lost the love of, of the flight. Yeah. He doesn't cradle his flashlight anymore. No, no. It's just a simple on and off. <laughs> <laughs> There was an art to it before, and now it's just no. click, click. The, the love is gone. The love is gone. Come on, Pete. <laughs> Come on. It's a dim flame, not a bright LED. No, absolutely. One, one night, one night, it just ran out of battery, and he didn't even change it. No. He just walked around in the dark? He just he just walked around in the dark. <laughs> I've heard he uses his Pokemon gear instead sometimes. His Pokey gear flashlight? Yeah. I just, yes, yes. 
Ah, uh, fifteen percent. Oh god. Terrible. You know, he, he's always <laughs> hovering in the low battery zone. Oh yeah, it's always in the right zone. Oh, Porter Pete, we know so much about you now than we didn't before. <laughs> But now we we know some, some would say too much. We know some would say too much. It's how much we know. Bye, Porter Pete. There he goes. There he goes, leaving the scene. Oh, man. Oh, wow. He just locked up for the night, huh? Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Perfect. Now's the time to act. Now's our chance. You go to break into the museum, which is funded mostly by your family and also free general admission to the public. But <laughs> it is now closed for the evening. Okay, so so is 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 Ica's version of breaking to the museum just using the family key? Yes. She's like, right, time for super secret stealth mission number one, unlocking the door <laughs> with my family key. <laughs> yes, but go ahead and roll stealth anyway. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Ooh, natural seventeen plus one. Okay, eighteen, eighteen. You stealth in there like you own the place. <laughs> But I still maintain the facade of it being, like, really dangerous. Oh, absolutely. And Pearl doesn't know the difference. She's, yeah. Dum -ba -dum -dum, dum -dum 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 -dum. And we're doing, like, little flips and rolls. Me and Celia are loving it. Oh, yeah. Celia's in a turtleneck. Yes, she is. She's changed out to a black beret and scarf <laughs> yeah. rather than her red ones. Okay, so we're in. And, yeah, I guess I guess we sort of do a... Do a training montage? Yes. Yeah, training montage. Uh, describe for, for each of your Pokemon one training montage bit that you do. Here in the museum, as you look around, there is a lot of, as you said, there's there's planes, uh, like there's old-timey biplanes up to more, you know, current and very sleek jets and things. Uh, there's also like a space wing. Oh, there's a space wing. Okay, all right. Like, there's a bit about the whole meteor thing, obviously, and there there are some, you know, uh, rocket-type things, and then there is also, you know, more of the Pokemon side that's flying Pokemon. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. You see reconstructed, like, not actual fossil skeletons, but you see, like, reconstructed um, r replicas of, like, an Archaeops, an Aerodactyl skeleton, and those sort of things all around the place. It's uh, it's a very, very cool spot. We go, we go to the fossil section, we're like, well, this is kind of boring. We, we, we've literally seen these alive, like, two seconds ago. We did, did that already. Yeah, been there. Been there, right? That was not even got a big enough, terrible, awful maw. Is it me or does that skull look paper mache? Is it me or does anybody else just kind of want to lick it? Just to know. To lick the... And she starts to hold out the ones that they got today. What, the, the fossil? The, oh, yeah, oh, the real one. Yeah, like, doesn't it kind of look like salivating? I mean... Are you, talk, are you talking about the rock or the yellow stone? Because I think this... Oh, it was just me. Oh, okay. And she starts to shove them back in. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think Puff and I... I think there's sort of there's like there's like a fun training one with Puff where Puff finds some kind of wind tunnel. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming there's a wind tunnel there. Yeah, absolutely, there's a wind tunnel that measures you know the, the aerodynamics of stuff. Yeah, well, there's a bit like there's there's like a kids area thing where there's the wind tunnel and you can make paper airplanes and like attach them to a little paper clip on a string and they go in the wind tunnel and you see how they fly. Great. Okay. So oh, that's perfect. So there's a kids paper airplane one, um, and Puff gets into the, the 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 machine and it's like it's really tame and low because obviously it's meant to just blow onto paper airplanes and Puff is there and kind of trying to get some speed and stuff and nothing's happening and I, I sort of I nod to Tink on my head I'm like Tink maybe you could take it up a gear clang, clang. and uh, and Tink goes to the machine that's blowing the wind and just starts turning and the wind just like gets into this absolute hurricane gale and Puff the Pidgeot is like trying to <laughs> basically fight the wind and be aerodynamic but it's still kind of cool i guess yeah oh yeah yeah no i like it i like it excellent so that's puff what is sky gonna do and what's george foreman gonna do so i imagine pearl just loves all the planes she definitely hops in in one and starts you know just pressing all the buttons and that's mainly where she puts her time in but georgie gets out and i like to imagine there's a huge flag of the region yeah, big Kanoko flag. And Pearl's just like, maybe you should do some reps. And Georgie's just like spins up the flag. Georgie's doing silks. And roll it down. Yeah. Rolls it up <laughs> and rolls it down. Yes. While like Pearl continues to watch in the plane, just going, bing, bing. rep one, push the button. And pushes all her buttons while Georgie does reps. Barrel roll game, strong. Excellent. <laughs> the core strength is just amazing. Mm -hmm. I tell you, it's angles. It's all about them angles. Oh, yeah. We're trying to get all the hexagons rolling at the same time. Excellent. 
you know what? I, I let you in on a secret, bro. And this is from some. This is from someone who's been at every air show since they were four or three. I don't know. That's when I started getting memories. But no one has ever performed the six barrel roll super turn. It's it's an it's a it's a mythical move, but no one's ever been able to do six barrel turns in a row. And six in a row. Yeah. I, apparently, once it was accomplished, but never again. I don't know. This feels like maybe it's it's Georgie's turn. Sex topple barrel roll. That's that's the word. That's the one that I was digging around in my brain for, and it never came. It's all right. I've got that sort of uh, teenager amount of words in my brain. <laughs> you know I, I've I've read I've read my share of the dictionary. You're so smart, Luca. Pearl holds up her notebook, <laughs> and Luca writes that word down. He pulls out the whiteboard again. Yeah. Ding. I think we can do it, guys. We just have to get the right angles, like you said. Ooh. Right angles. And then Pearl does take a moment to just read about this moonwalk. Moonwalk? No, the moon rocks. And, like, just the space materials. Yeah, I think we all we all go there for sure. I think that you, you take a moment and um, as you look and you read over stuff, you see a recreated biplane. They, they recreated Gloria's plane, uh, and it actually shows like her flight pattern and uh, where uh, there's like a graphic of the trajectory of the meteor as it was coming down. And you you read all about it. There are no other bits of space rock here, though. Like there there's not like a, a big one or anything like that. Just that one small piece is all that landed here. You actually do read that after it got blasted with the hyperbeam from the unpheasant, uh, that first of all, some people claim that they saw another figure flying in the air, darting around the plane, around the unpheasant and Gloria. Uh, but that's just hearsay. And that's, you know, just from firsthand accounts of what happened. Some people say that they saw something else flying up there with them. But then you actually read that the blast was huge. The vast majority of the meteor was destroyed, but a big old chunk of it did land out in the desert, like we talked about previously. The largest chunk of meteor that actually landed to the ground and still did create a crater in the ground, uh, luckily did not land in a populated area, did not land in a, a city like Tremella Town, how it was, how it was headed for, you know, a, a settlement of people. But this bit of it was blown up, knocked off course, and landed in the Phalaris Forest, which is a petrified forest out in the desert in the southern part of the region. It's this petrified forest out in the desert. Whoa. Wow. It's rare you see a desert so scared. <laughs> what spooked it? The Phalaris Forest is out in the desert south of Agaricus City, which is uh, between routes 12 and 21. Uh, in, the, in the far southern part of the region, it got knocked way off course, and somehow they, they were at such high altitude that this chunk of it just landed way, way over there. But nobody goes there. Huh, I wonder why. And that area is now known as the Virus Crater inside of the Phalaris Forest. Yeah, that doesn't sound friendly. It sounds like people are just trying to mash as many sounds and words as they possibly can. Like scary things? Valeris, petrified, scuba died. Vi viral sensation. Yeah, I think they're only missing the letter Z now. Why would a DM ever do that? <laughs> 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 Love ya. <laughs> Here's a place and a thing that sounds very ominous over there. Spooky. Maybe we'll go there one day. What do you think, Sealy? Oh, no, as she says, sounds like a plot hook to me. Yeah, that looks super scary and weird. Um, but I think, I think, I think Sky and I are going to do some training in here too. So, so it's like, so there's, there's Glory's biplane. Oh, could, I tell you what, could the training be? Maybe this exhibit, there's something part, part of Glory's biplane or whatever is like not being displayed because it's broken or something, or it's just worn down a little bit. So it's been taken away. It's, it's like an old replica model of it, but it's been around for so long that, you know, it's, yeah. parts of it, and especially because, yeah, you know, people, or, or you specifically, come and play on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost entirely my fault. <laughs> yes, I fully appreciate that, but I do want to give back and I want to help. So uh, Sky and I are going to try and get up there. Um, maybe, like, I'll, I'll winch my way up and Sky's going to, like, fly tools around and stuff and... We're gonna we're gonna use my my tinkering skills to to fix up the the exhibit and make it look 
nice and shiny again. Ooh, very nice. And better than the fossil section, which was boring. <laughs> Go ahead and give me a tinkering check. I'm sure Ooh. you're proficient with your tinker's tool. So mm-hmm, proficiency mm-hmm. and then plus your, well, what do you think you're using here? Are you using like your intelligence to do this? Like, oh, I know what this is. Or is it just like a dexterity sort of thing? I'd say intelligence. Yeah. So roll, roll plus intelligence and proficiency. Okay. 20. Not natural, but but 20. Yeah, full on 20. The training goes very well as Sky is effortlessly uh, flying tools around for you and just sort of dropping them in your hands as you need them. And you really fix it up and it, this replica plane looks good as new. Awesome. And as you're doing that training, the, those three have their training complete. I think that Luca actually like goes back over to the fossil area and he lets Tufus out and Tufus is just feeling real smug, like looking up at those fake skeletons, just like, <laughs> uh, and just sort of strutting around like he owns the place. While Luca says, all right, Hercules, uh, let's train a little bit. And he lets out his hair across. And the hair cross, it's like best in short bursts. So it's doing a lot of like jumping around, like uh, having those wings flap, 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 really quickly as it like sort of jumps from exhibit to exhibit very quickly in between, more so than, you know, a a marathon. Uh, It's a a notorious, notorious sprinter, very dangerous over short distances, (laughs) much like a dwarf. Very dangerous over short distances. As we continue our thread of just all of the pop culture references. Also, famously, the tagline of Usain Bolt's Nike campaign. (laughs) In the same way that you all had the freeze frame high five, it's Usain Bolt and Gimli doing freeze frame high five. Gimli. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I wear my Nikes. Toss me. Toss me, you say. (laughs) Toss me into the superstore. That's it. There it is. So you all complete your training. So what that means for tomorrow is the outside of whoever you bond with, you, the trainer, have an extra inspiration that you can use during one of your competitions tomorrow. Cool. And do you have anything else that you would like to do before you head home for the evening and get ready for the show tomorrow? I think I just write to my dad. Yep. Write to Captain Ron. I am going to write. I'm going to write some little good luck notes to my new friends. And on Luca's one, I'm going to dot the I in Ica with a heart. hey I felt it coming. Forward. Forward, I know. Very forward. But she's putting it out there. She's going to put that out there. <laughs> she's becoming a new human. I love it. The confidence. I love it. And I think that as you all get home, it's a little bit, it's later at night, uh, but you come home and uh, Ernest is there once again watching the shopping channel. Uh, another cooking utensil is being advertised. What is it this time? It's, it's not the egg smoother again, but what, what fantabulous contraption is on the TV t- tonight? This is a frying pan sharpener. Frying oh. pan sharpener. Oh, that looks good, Ernest. Yeah. All right, well, thank left. you. Don't please, no, nah, don't listen to her, Mima. She's, she's, she's just being silly. All right, you don't need. It's too late. No, no, you don't need it. Oh, all right. I've already ordered it. All right, all right. What do you, what do, you, what are you gonna do with it? I mean, what are you gonna cut with your pan? You know, Franklin had stuff like that all the time on the ship, Ernest. Like we constantly collecting. Who's who's this Franklin? Oh, he was the chef on the SS Clara. I mean, he still is the chef, but you know. He was Mm. really good. Well, that sounds like a good man right there. Like, this is stuff that pros use. Mima, easy, easy, all right? Like, listen, I know she's invited you on a cruise and everything, but that doesn't mean you can just go and... uh, Let's leave it to her frying pan sharpening and go bed. (laughs) Right, well, I might. No funny business now, Mima. And I think that as you you go up to uh, probably hang out in the aviary a little bit, make uh, your forts are still up from last night, but you pass by and you see that your mom is in her room and she comes out. She says, well, hello there, Ica. What, what have you been up to today? I haven't seen you since I got home. All the confidence that I guess Luca and Pearl have seen Ica build up over the last day or so just drains out of her. She is a wreck. She is sort of shivering a little bit she, the, the, the blood drains from her face and it's just it's like she can't string a word together or send um oh uh, um well i uh, the um, mother um these are uh, the, the people that uh, um we uh hi i'm pearl it's nice to meet you i'm laura and she shakes your hand and she shakes luca's hand as well he's like hi i'm luca uh, and i think that luca is sort of like struck for a moment <laughs> 
with this with this tall, slender, powerful woman. <laughs> oh, mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mother. <laughs> uh, uh, he's like, uh, hi. But your mom says, well, Ika, uh, you excited to come see me and your cousin Cody and Mima on the air show tomorrow? And she just, she freezes for a second. Oh, yeah, we're excited, but Ika's competing. Your mother looks at you with a, a look of confusion. So we'll see you on the course. Um, yes, I'm in it. I'm competing. And we will <sighs> see you there, mother. What, what are you competing? Who are you competing with? I didn't know you had a Pokemon that could compete. With, with Sky. With Sky? Mm-hmm. Sky's ready. Sky wants to compete. And <sighs> Sky will win. Well, I, I, are you sure about that? I know you've been working on uh, this contraption or, or what have you for Sky, but are, are you sure? I think I think she just looks looks to Pearl in that moment because it, there's still a part of her that's not sure, but she wants to be. Well, Ika begins to crumble. Pearl just puts her hand in one of Ika's pockets. Yes. In an attempt to let Ika know that she's there, essentially. Oh, it's just, it's like a comforting pocket thing. Yeah, it's like a comforting pocket thing. Oh, yes, pocket seven, the comfort pocket. That is, yes, I leave that one free for comfort. But Pearl just says, yeah, Sky's totally ready. Who are you going to compete with? I'm going to be competing with my Pharaoh. What's your Pharaoh's nickname? Again, I think it's something far more majestic than than Pharaoh deserves. I think it's like Columbus. Well, I'll be competing with my Pharaoh Columbus. Uh, as always, it's my he's my main partner. Cool, cool, cool. Well, um, thanks for letting us sleep in your house. Your towels are great. And what's your thread count? It's got to be at least a 700. It's a very high thread count. As I've realized that now I've made another smug Irish sounding character. <laughs> <laughs> Shane is another long lost cousin. He's like, wait a minute. Smug, smug family. <laughs> oh, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Somebody, somebody's chomping my flavor. What's going on? Well, it's been great to meet you. We got to get, like, you know, our good vibes, our juju. We have a cleansing ritual. We're going to, you know, use mouth rinse tonight. So it's going to take us a little bit to get ready. So, uh, you know, pre-aerial rituals. Ica is just nodding, like, feverishly. Like, nod, 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 nod. And, you know, it's it's one of those things where if, if Pearl has to pull her away, she's still looking kind of down the corridor at her mother, but just just has no words for the moment. Come on, Ika. Time to grab a spoon and an ice cube. Sp- spoony ice cube time? That's the one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love me ice cube spoons. And you all head down the hallway as your mother, Laura, waves after you. And she says, well, all right, well, we'll, we'll see you in the morning then. <sighs> Ika. She's terrifying. You got to change your <sighs> shirt. You've sweated through it. That's, uh, yeah, I know. I know. Oh, man. I don't have any other shirts. Do you have any shirts, Pearl? <laughs> ah, totally. I literally have one shirt. Totally, I got a ton. And she starts to, you know, unpack her cartoon wardrobe. You take a shirt out of a t-shirt style. cannon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, perfect. Oh, yes, I want the cannon shirt. What What lost and found shirt is, is currently loaded into the t-shirt cannon? I like to imagine it's a ripped up kind of tee. So it used to be a t-shirt and Pearl, like, Took scissors to it, took off the sleeves. Has it got fringe? (laughs) Yeah, totally. The cutout fringe. A teal color that matches Ika's hair, actually. Yeah, yes, yes. And it's an old Nido Queen. What's the band name? Nido Queens of the Stone Age? Yeah. Nido Queens of the Stone Age, yes. It's an old Nido Queen of the Stone Age Age, uh, tour concert tee. Side note, I love Nido Queens of the Stone Edge. That's that's fantastic. I don't know if that was accidental, but that's amazing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Luca has changed into his pajamas for the evening, and instead of his Fungus Fighter shirt, he's now wearing his Aerodactyl Smith shirt. <laughs> of course. And I think we'd establish, haven't we, that, that Ika's clothes didn't fit particularly well. Yeah, the pajamas, yeah. She Well, apparently she doesn't have many <laughs> at all. Um, but I think this, even though this is a, this is a sort of secondhand one, I think it just fits really well, really nicely. Where the pajamas before were were short and ill-fitting, this is actually just just a nicer sort of loose fit on her. And it works. And it, yeah, it just works. It just works really nicely. Um, thanks, Pearl. Anytime. I like it a lot. Really, I do. I do. It looks really 
good on you. Thank you. Listen, Pearl, I'm sorry I froze back there. I, um, there's just still something about my mum that I just can't get over. I, you know, do you get it? I do, but I also don't. And she, she does get serious in this moment. Aika. Mm-hmm? No matter what happens tomorrow, you can't go back. Like, I... Back to where? The, the museum? No, no, no. Focus, focus, focus. Oh, sorry, sorry. So you can't go backwards. Like, when I was four, I was actually afraid to sing in front of other people. I would only sing to Franklin in the kitchen or my dad when he was steering the ship. And then when I found Seely, Seely pushed me and helped me get stronger. And now I sing all the time in front of people all the time. And, you know, I would keep singing even if I don't have Seely by my side because that's what I'm supposed to do. So tomorrow, no matter how things go, whether you win or you lose, or we all just fall on our faces and, you know, get mud all over ourselves, you can't go backwards. You can't keep hiding. You gotta keep growing. Keep flying. Because that's what I'm supposed to do. Totally. And I think with that, she just... You know, scrunches her fists on her knees a little bit, and then and then hugs Pearl, and it's quite an awkward. It's an, it's an awkward hug. It's she she almost starts it with a little distance between them, and it's just like. Mm. And then I think Pearl like cl- yeah. pulls you in closer. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. I don't care if you're still sweaty. <laughs> yes, she definitely is a little bit. And with that, that's where we'll end this episode, as we prepare for the air show tomorrow. Yeah! Oh! It's been teased. It's been teased. Come on. Are you looking for high-quality, family-friendly podcasts? Shows that are safe for younger or more sensitive listeners? Podicon Go is a reliable corner of the internet for the kind of podcast that everyone can enjoy. From educational programs to conversational topics and incredible storytelling and role-playing shows in a variety of styles, themes, and age groups. Podicon Go is a group of independent podcast creators dedicated to creating high-quality programs that provide family fun for everyone. Visit podicongo.com for an ever-growing lineup of shows, complete with descriptions and ways you can listen. Connect with the Podicon Go Family Friendly Podcast Network on Facebook and Twitter. P-O-D-I-C-O-N. Go! It's podcast fun for everyone. Podicon Go! Thank you for listening to Postcards from Poa and Crush Company Jr.